The Forza Motorsport series has had a strong legacy. It's a realistic take on driving that anyone can hop into at a level they're comfortable with, but it also provides the means to improve. It relishes in the details, modeling hundreds of cars inside and out, letting you peek at the engines and paint the exteriors. And it's been consistent, releasing every other year like clockwork. Now it's time for yet another new entry in the celebrated series, but what does Forza Motorsport 7 add to that legacy? At this point, it's almost possible to skip talking about the core of Forza, as the driving itself has felt so good for so long. The Xbox One controller is clearly a custom fit to Turn 10's needs, and the amount of precision and feedback it provides is purely excellent. The sound and rumble of your wheels slightly going off track, mirrors and wipers subtly shaking as you accelerate, all accentuate the sense of flying around the track and pushing just past the limit. Aside from the overt differences between something like a heavy truck and a light open-wheel racer, even subtle adjustments to tuning setups can be readily felt in how a car performs. Night and weather races that were introduced in Forza 6 are now dynamic, with tracks expressing more variation at different times of day and conditions that can quickly develop from partly cloudy to a full-on storm. The reduction in visibility can make a huge difference in the tension of a race, and the puddles that build over time can induce a bit of panic as they cause you to hydroplane. It should be noted, however, that only certain tracks have night or weather options, and once in a while, some events can feel a bit scripted, with rain starting to fall at very specific points in a race. The main career consists of a series of championships, each giving you a range of options to pursue from different racing series and showcase events. To advance to the next round, you simply need to accrue a certain score, giving you freedom to pick what you like, as you typically only need to participate in half of the events in each championship. The career does a good job of introducing you to a wide portion of the game's 700 vehicles, putting you behind the wheel of tiny ATVs, massive racing trucks, classic muscle cars, and of course, iconic sports cars like the one on the cover. However, while there are plenty of different vehicles to get accustomed to, otherwise there's not much variety. One-off showcase events try to mix things up by having you bowl with a limousine, weave through autocross courses, or engage in rather easy head-to-head -head races against Ken Block, but these are mostly brief and familiar from past games. There are also times when it feels like the spirit of these cars gets lost in the process. With no rally courses, rally cars take on the same congested laps as everything else. A series meant to celebrate the birth of Grand Prix with cars from the 1930s oddly starts on the five-year-old Circuit of the Americas. There's still nothing resembling the harrowing Japanese mountain courses from earlier Forza games on the Xbox 360, and at one point, you race a Jaguar convertible with the top down in the rain. There's a lot of great racing either way, but it feels like there's room to establish a much stronger identity for each of the various forms of motorsport. Contributing to this sense of sameness is the fact that the vast majority of races start you in the middle of the pack, around 12th place, as the game doesn't have a system to establish starting order on the grid. By default, races typically only last two to five laps, and if you're going up against AI drivers that match your skill level, overtaking a dozen cars in such a short time isn't quite a realistic expectation. The result is that there's often pressure to push things too far, smashing through the pack in the opening turns, getting sloppy and impatient, and frustrating yourself in the process. Thankfully, there's a solution to these headaches that doesn't involve lowering the difficulty, as Forza 7 includes an option to increase the length of races to be more in the ballpark of 10 to 15 laps, or even longer if you prefer. Taking part in these extended races allows for a more measured and technical approach that feels more rewarding as a result, and the payouts for credits and XP also increase accordingly. Whether it's with the lengthier race settings or an hour-long endurance race, spending more time out on the track simply makes you feel more in tune with the road and the car. And since pit stops have been slightly improved as well, players can more readily engage with tire and fuel options too. Players used to making their car their own may feel a bit let down since the upgrade system has been made nearly obsolete. Rather than buying a stock car and improving it as you like, any car you buy now comes pre-upgraded, maxing out the rating in its given class. Since every car on track has essentially the same rating, and upgrading your car any further would bump it out of an event's class, there's little reason to explore upgrades in Forza 7 at all. Outside of the career, Forza 7's other ways to play feel a bit underwhelming, and there are coming soon badges on features such as Forza-thon, multiplayer leagues, and the auction house. For players wanting to get really intimate with the tracks, rival events are still a great place to go, putting you up against ghosts from the leaderboards with ever so slightly better times in a regularly updated series of challenges. More direct multiplayer supports up to 24 players, but it's fairly bare bones. There's a range of different hoppers to race within specific vehicle classes, but not much more. As online races still tend to have a fair number of unintentional bumps and catastrophic wrecks, it's nice to see that some hoppers remove collisions, putting the emphasis back on the road. 
Unfortunately, at the time of writing, multi-class races seem to be woefully broken. These races are designed to give a head start to a slower set of cars, then give a faster set of cars a chance to come from behind in attempts to catch up and pass them. However, currently all the cars in both classes tend to start at the same time, giving the slower cars no chance to even complete the race. Comically, we've even had times when the faster cars were the ones given the head start. A bug like that is bound to get fixed, but Forza's most damaging changes are with its economy. In the past, turning off various assists like the driving line and traction control have been rewarded with increased payouts, subtly encouraging players to remove the training wheels one by one. Assist options are still included in Forza 7, but changing them no longer nets you increased rewards. In their place are the various mods that were introduced in Forza 6, essentially many challenges stacked on top of your current race. These feature many of the exact same conditions, such as using the cockpit view, changing your steering options, or driving in the rain. By applying these cards to one of three slots during a race, you can net an extra percentage of earnings. In the best case scenarios, these feel welcome, adding variety as you attempt to overcome your handicaps. The trouble is that mods have a very limited number of uses, and once you've maxed one out, the card vanishes in a puff of smoke. How do you get more mods? By buying prize crates, of course. Looks like you got some credits to spend. Hey, why not invest in a prize crate? Price crates are new to Forza Motorsport 7 and available at various price levels. You can buy a standard crate to get a few common mods, or you can spend more to get rarer mods with higher payouts, or even rare cars, badges, and driver outfits. To be clear, none of these prize crates can currently be purchased with real money, although Turn 10 has confirmed that the option is on the way. When you start the game, you'll get a few crates for free, providing plenty of mods to play with, but by the time your deck starts to run thin, there's an established dependence on them. It starts to feel wrong to race with an empty mod slot, creating a psychological pressure to buy another crate. Then, if the random group of cards isn't that great, there's the urge to spend a bit more on a higher tier. Again, none of this is real money, but it feels awful just the same. What ultimately broke us out of the cycle is the fact that cars offered as rewards are sometimes merely discounted rather than free. When we no longer had the funds to afford a car that we'd rightfully earned, we questioned whether we were truly getting a return on the prize crate investment, and we abandoned the crates and mods altogether. Once you've stopped gambling your winnings away, there's still much to enjoy in Forza Motorsport 7. The driving is excellent, there's an enormous amount of cars to explore, and the improvements to weather and race length are appreciated. Yet there's no defining element to really get behind, aside from the ability to play in 4K after the launch of the Xbox One X. On its own, Forza Motorsport 7 has merit, but if you've invested a lot of time into the series, it can feel like it's spinning its wheels. Easy Allies reviews are made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash easyallies to see our other videos, and consider becoming a patron to help us make more.